Okay, I want to show you a little something else with this program. I think it'd be useful to know. Um, first of all, we move eight into EAX, and really to optimize this, we don't need to store four into EBX. I could just say multiply four, and that will take four, multiply it against the value in EAX, which is eight, and then give us our thirty-two or two zero in hex. So, so that removes the need for this intermediate. Uh, register copy. Let's just F11 through that. And, oh! Oh! <laughs> Do you get the problem? Pause the video. Think about it. Okay. Immediate operand not allowed. Again, with the uh, we're dealing with some hardware architecture here. The hardware of a of a 32-bit uh, Intel machine and. And part of the hardware says, you know what, if you want to multiply, that's fine, but I cannot do that with a immediate value. And that's that's because of the way that the multiply operator is defined. And again, I'm going to get into, later I'll get into instructions and how they're actually stored in the file. And uh, anyway, part of that is I cannot store an immediate value within that instruction in the OBJ file. So, so there you go, I cannot do it. So thus, I have to go back to the roundabout way of doing what I'm doing and store four into EBEX and then do the multiply. So there you go, you're, there you're seeing a limitation of the hardware. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to mess with your mind even more. Let's put the EBX back in here. So that will multiply EAX and EBX and give us our two zero in hex. But before I do that, I'm going to move into EDX a value, and I don't really care what value it is. I just want to put a value in there. I noticed when I was recording the last video and when I execute this, let me just hit F11, Control alt d F11. Uh, if you see EDX, it just had a zero in there. And why there's a zero in there? It's just because that's what's left over from whatever was using this register before us. Okay, so I, I want to put a non-zero value in there. And it looks like in hex, that converted to a 5BCA. And uh, let me just show you how what's going to happen here. Uh, I'm going to run through the same program we did in the last video. Take 4, multiply it against 8, but watch what happens uh, to EDX when I do the multiply. First of all, EAX will change to an 8, EBX will change to a 4, uh, EDX will change to a 5BCAH, so here's EDX right here, and there we go, that number's there, and then I'm going to multiply EAX and EBX, and we know, we know that will change that to a z to 0 right here, but just watch EDX when I do that, just watch F11. <gasps> EDX went back to a zero. What's going on? Well, let me explain. Uh, but to do so, now remember, we're working with a 32-bit machine. Again, F11, all right? This is 32 bits because each hexadecimal digit represents four bits. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexadecimal digits. Eight times four is 32 bits. Okay, remember that four bits makes a nibble. You saw that in the binary video, binary playlist, uh, which I, hopefully you've gone through by now. All right, well, 32 bits or 2 bits or 22 billion bits, it's all roughly the same. So I'm going to go, let's go with a nibble, okay, a four-bit architecture. Say we're working on a machine that had only four bits in its register. Let's, let's do a uh, zero, one. 0, 1, and let's multiply that with 0, 0, 1, 1. Again, refer to the binary numbers playlist if you need a refresher on how to multiply numbers. But it's a lot the same as a uh, decimal. We just say, okay, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 0 is 0, and then I uh, have to add a 0 in here, and then 1 times 1 is 1, and you can basically see that since this is a 1, we just need to write this number down here. Uh, so 1, 0, 1, zero like so and then since these are zeros they add nothing you know I can put in zeros if I want to and then do the zero times everything with like on but it's not going to add a, add any value here so I'm actually going to leave that step out let's let's now do the addition okay so 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 I didn't mean for that to happen but it did and so this number times this number causes no overflow at all. Now what if I just come in here and sneak a let's sneak a one in here and we, let's do let's do the problem again. All right, let's erase all that. And uh Here we go. Okay, so 1 times 1, well 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 
zero, and then we need to add the zero in there, and then one times one is one, one times one is one, one times one is one, one times zero is zero, like so on and so forth. I'm not going to do these because they add nothing. So one plus zero is one, one plus one is one, that's not one, it's zero, carry the one. One plus one plus one, well that's one, carry the one. One plus one is zero, carry the one, and oh look, we just had some overflow. All right, we started with we started with four bits, and then we multiplied that against another four bits, and then out popped this one overflow. And we're used to with uh, binary numbers when we add them, we can always get a a one one. There's a there's a maximum of one bit carry out. All right, we've seen examples of that in the binary numbers playlist. Uh, but but multiplication, that's a little bit more extreme than addition, right? And we didn't even have all the numbers turned on. I'm thinking, what if we what if we turned all these on? I want to I want to do the uh, let's turn this up to the max. Let me clear this off, and I'm going to do something extreme. Let's uh, one 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 one. Let's fill this up. Let's turn them all on as best as we can. One 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 one. So we're gonna the biggest possible four bit number against the multiply that against the biggest possible four bit number and uh, let's see one times one is one 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 and we need to fill in the zero here and then uh, one we're done with this digit so one times one is one hopefully you can see since we have a one here we're just going to have another four ones like so and we're done with this digit and then fill in the two zeros, and then this one, we'll add another four ones in here, like so, and then done with that digit. Now this one's going to add another four ones. That, well, we need to put our zeros in here because we're, since we're three digits over, we need to add three zeros in there. And then one times all that, well, that's just another four ones. And look at all these numbers. Whew. Now we need to add them. Oh, this might get extreme. So one plus nothing. And again, it's going to get kind of tricky. I refer you to the uh, binary numbers playlist if possible, if necessary, to review what I'm doing here. But 1 plus nothing is, uh, 1 plus all these zeros is 1. And then 1 plus 1, well, that's 0. Carry a, I better change colors here. I better change. Carry a 1. All right, let me just change these up again. So 1, 0. OK, so 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. And now, oh, look, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Well, that's a 4. All right, there's your binary four. So our carry, uh, this zero here, we'll go down here. Again, refer to the binary playlist if you need to. So zero here, and then these two, that's our carry. So zero, one, okay. And then we got one plus one plus one plus one. Well, that's another four. So take this first zero and, and put it here. And then our carry is uh, zero, one. So zero, one. All right now, one plus one. See how we kind of carried over our last carry? That's kind of weird how that works. But when you're dealing with binary numbers, you got two digits, two no values per digit. You're limited to that. Uh, one plus one plus one plus one. Ah, that's another four. So again, this zero comes down here. And then our carry will be zero one. And then my columns are kind of not lining up here. Let me just kind of break these columns down so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, one plus one plus one. Well, that's that's a three, right? One one. So one carry a one, and then one plus one plus one. Well, that's another three. So one carry a one. One plus nothing is one. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. We have we started with four bits, multiplied that against another four bits, and look at all this overflow we got. It's no longer just one bit as we're used to with addition. We got how, how many bits do we have? Well, here's our first four bits, so that means we carried out, or we overflowed, one, two, three, four bits. All right, we overflowed uh, four bits of multiplication there. All right, now I don't know if I can come up with a mathematical proof for this, but let me just kind of tell you tell you a little bit what's going on here. We, if, you, if, you, if you do a multiply with uh, basically any, <coughs> any base, all right, but if you do a multiply, the max number of overflow you can have is the number of uh, digits that you started with. In this case, we started with four. So our max amount of overflow we can have is four. All right, hopefully that makes sense. We started with four digits, so that means we can overflow up to eight. We can go eight digits wide on our end result or, or our end answer. We can overflow four digits. Now, now what does this mean for our, our assembly program? done with that. When I do a multiply here, that multiplies 
whatever the argument is, it always multiplies it against EAX. But what if EAX, the value in EAX and, and the source argument, EBX in this case, what if they're so big that we have this like mega overflow? We could have up to 32 bits of overflow. Let me draw that here. I got EAX right here. Okay, EAX. All right, and if I have 32 bits all turned on, that's not going to be 32, I'm guessing here, but you get the idea. And I multiply it against another register, any register. I'll just, we're using EBX, so why not? If I have all these bits turned on, well, poor little EAX isn't big enough to hold the resulting value. We're going to have 32 bits of overflow, so we'll have like tons of bits out here, and, and hopefully you get the idea. It's just EAX isn't big enough. So what the Intel architecture does is says, well, <laughs> 32 bits means we can have 32 bits of overflow. I can get another 32 bits. I'll grab it from the EDX register. Okay, does that make sense? So, so the result when I multiply anything against e, EAX, the result. I'll even draw the line here. So we're going to do a multiply. That's a multiplication symbol. If I multiply EAX against something else and we get a big value up to 32 bits of overflow, then it stores the result in the EDX, EDX, EAX pair. Meaning all those ones and zeros I was drawing out here of overflow, they're going to go in the E. DEX register, and then EAX will still contain the lower 32 bits of the result. So let's do that. Let's let's see what we can let's clear this off the screen. I'm going to get the Windows calculator up here, and uh, let's go to View Programmer. Hopefully, uh, if you watch the Binary Numbers playlist, I've used this several times in that playlist. Here's here's 32 bits. Remember these first 32 bits. What's nice about the Windows calculator is it goes up to a full 64 bit, but we're just going to take the 32 bits here. Let's turn them all on. Do you remember how to do that? Let's switch to hexadecimal and just start pumping F's into here. You can see the ones are filling into the nibbles. Okay, we've turned them all on and I'm going to hit multiply, which means let's multiply this against itself. Let's just do itself. I'm going to hit equals and basically I'm multiplying a 32-bit number maxed out with a 32-bit number maxed out and that's going to overflow something serious up here. Let's watch what happens. Click equals and you can see, oh, <laughs> had you done this by hand, that's the same result you would have got. And notice the insane amount of overflow here. We still have room here to add, add ones in. I mean, there's still plenty of room to add numbers, but we overflowed something serious into these upper uh, 32 bits. And so let's write an assembly program to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here, shift F5, get out of that mode. And uh, let's move into EAX. Uh, OK, now to type hexadecimal into assembly, I always have to lead it with a 0 and I have to end it with an H. OK, and I want to do the same thing we did with the calculator here. I need to pump Fs in here. So how many Fs do I need? Well, with 32 bits, that's 8 Fs. So uh, F, 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 F. FF, right? I'm going to turn on all the bits in EAX. EBX, same thing. I'm just going to say 0, FFFF, FFFF, hex. All right, we've turned them both on. And then uh, EDX, I'm actually, remember, I just put this value in here so you could see it go to a 0. We didn't have enough overflow to do anything interesting in EDX before, but now we do. So I'm going to uh, highlight this, delete that, and let's just say multiply. Multiply this big 32-bit number against this big 32-bit number. And EAX should go to all zeros except the one right here. And then EDX should go to all Fs except this last one, which is an E right there. So here we go. F11. Uh, control D. F11. And watch. EAX will change to all Fs. EBX will change to all Fs. We're going to multiply. Keep an eye on EAX, that should change to a 1, and the EDX will change to all Fs, except the last digit will be an E. So F11, there you go. There is our EDX, EAX pair. In fact, I can actually, uh, let's see if I can get to a whitish window right here, and let's just, let's just draw this out. So uh, actually, I'll use this tool here. 
I'm going to type this in next to each other. It's, it's F, 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 E, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. All right, so this is the, grab red here, this is the EDX, EDX, EAX pair. And so even though we're on a 32-bit processor, uh, the multiply instruction allows us to combine the two values like this so we get a nice 64-bit kind of uh, value here.